understand sequences in Kotlin, it's important to understand how lists operate over list of data and how the mapping operations occur to each of the list items. So what we're gonna do is create a list of strings and then we're gonna filter that list and it's not really gonna filter anything, it's just gonna go ahead and process it in print line and then return back true, basically saying all the items will be included. And then finally, we'll go ahead and then print line it at the end of each one of those. Now, for each is one of the things we're, when we're doing here is actually showing that a list is eagerly evaluated. So each time there's an operation, a new list is created. So what that means is if I were to perform this same filter operation twice, and I were to say hello here, what would happen is Kotlin is then going to create a, when it, it's gonna take the list from the beginning, and then in the filter function, it's going to create another list. And then from that list, that list will then be turned in and sent into this list right here. And when this one is done, that list will then, a new list will be created and sent into here. So basically we're having this type of thing happen here where these lists are being created over and over and over, but they're new lists. So this is a list off of this one. This is a list off of this one. And then a new list is finally created that we have a list down here. So. Kotlin is lazily evaluating those. And the easy way to see that is with this function here. And so let's go ahead and run this. And what we're going to see here on the screen, down here on the bottom, is that we have the filter was run for every single item in the list. And it didn't progress into the next function until all of the items were processed in the list. The same thing here, and then the same thing here. So as each item walked down, so this function did these ones, this function did these ones, and this function did these ones. So it op operated it one at a time. This one, then this one, then this one. And, I'm, and that's what's happening behind the scenes. Now this can become problematic when you have very large lists or many processing steps inside of your list because if they are processing intensive, then if we're creating a new collection each time, eagerly evaluating it, we can just start slowing down the process. So let's see what that kind of looks like uh, if we were to use a sequence. Okay, so I've copied and pasted some code and I've removed the additional filter up here. Now we have down here almost the same exact code. The only thing that's different is we have the sequence of. And what the sequence of is it it's a, returns a sequence, which is basically something that can be iterated over. And a sequence is, returns a value through its iterator. The values are evaluated lazily. That's the key. Values are evaluated lazily. While lists are evaluated eagerly. So we've created a sequence of this. Basically, everything else is the exact same for both of these. Now, if we run this, we're gonna see the difference here in the output. And so we have the line that's separating down here the top from the bottom. So up top, we have new list was created, new list was created. We can tell that because all of the items were processed in sequential order before it moved on to the next map operation or the next operation inside of the chain. However, inside of a sequence, we can see that the filter executed for the first value x, and then x moved on to the next value, to the next operation, which was for each. The same thing for y. So as each item is coming out of the sequence, it's processing through the entire chain until it hits down here, hits the termination. And so each item is processed sequentially, so as a sequence. So if you have a very large list or you have a very high intensive chain of events that are being processed, it's recommending that you that you use a sequence because it's much more performant. Now, if you have 10 items and you're only performing a couple of operations on a list, should you use it? We don't know. What if it's 100? We don't know. As the saying goes, what gets measured gets managed. So how do we measure if something is slow or not? Well, let's go ahead and delete this code. And let's go ahead and generate some code that has a very high number of values. Now, the code that I'm showing you is actually uh, from a, a gentleman named Benjamin. And if we go over to, I found this blog post quite a while ago, and it's been the one I've relied on for years on these sequences. And he talks about all this stuff in here, and I'll provide a link to it. So I'm actually using the same exact example he's using to show how performant some of this stuff is. Very, very useful. Thank you, Benjamin. Just wanted to give you credit for writing this phenomenal blog article. And I'm basically explaining a lot of what's covered in here, though he does go into some more detail with some other information. Okay, so let's go ahead and get some code to actually show how to measure things. Okay, so I have some code in here and this code does a couple of things. We're doing, we're generating a sequence as we have 
we can do, which is built into the Kotlin standard library. So I'm generating a sequence. I'm going to seed it with a value of one. And then for each iteration, again, generate sequence is in the Kotlin standard library. And it basically says you can give it a seed value and then we'll invoke the next function for every single time you want something from this, this sequence. And so I'm going to tell it to just increment that value and I want it to do it 50 million times. So I have a sequence of 50 million items and then I say, hey, turn that into a list. And so now I have this list of 50 million items, which is a very large list. Uh, and this can be processed on the laptop. So 50 million integers in a list. And then what I want to do is filter it. So find anything that's divisible by three and then average that out. And of course, we're going to get a value back. So let's go ahead and grab that value. It's result. And we can go ahead and put everything back up on a single line here because that kind of makes sense. And then we'll do is print the result. Print line and we'll do result. And then what this measure method will do here, which is what you've probably been wondering about, it takes in a block and a block is just a unit of code. And this measure function is explained in another video, but basically shows how long it takes this chunk of code to execute. And so this is what's passed in. And so let's go ahead and execute this. And then what we're going to see at the end is how long it took in milliseconds to process this. This could take anywhere from eight to 20 seconds, depends on my machine today. Uh, I've seen it kind of range all over the place, depends on what's happening on my machine. And it's still running. We can tell this by the, the stop icon is active, which means there's something running. The green little dot there also helps us indicate that something's running. There we go. Something came back. So we have the result, which is 2.5 to whatever power, et cetera, a very large number. And it took us 18,000 milliseconds. So basically about 18 seconds to run this process. So, okay. So we have a list we're processing over the list and remember how we executed those things before. So let's go ahead and change this. And instead of making this a list, let's go ahead and make this just a sequence. And so to do that, I'm just going to remove this list here. And instead of calling this a list, I'm going to call this, I'm going to change the name to a sequence. So now this is a sequence. So it's almost the same exact code. I've just changed the variable name and removed it from being a list. So let's rerun this to see how fast it is to process a very large list and do a couple of operations. Boom, we're already done. So 50 million items of the sequence took 628 milliseconds. And if we did it with a list, it took us almost 20 seconds to do. So it's orders of operations much more efficient to use a sequence in this manner. At what point should you use a sequence? That's up to you to decide. Should you be using a sequence? If it's 10 items, depends on how much processing you're doing on those 10 items. Are you doing 100 operations on it? Maybe it's important to use a sequence then. What if you have 100 million items and you're only doing two operations on it like we're doing here? And we're only doing a filter and an average. Should you use a sequence there? Probably so. But what if you have 10 operate, if you have 10 operations, it's not really doing much calculation and it's uh, only maybe 10 items in the, in the collection. Should it be, should you use a list? Eh, maybe, maybe not. It's up to you to decide. I wouldn't focus on making sure that everything is performant. Um, that's premature optimization. However, you can use this nice little handy measure block as we have here inside of your code, throw it inside of a utils folder or whatever, and then measure something. If you find piece of your code kind of being really slow, I highly recommend slapping the measure block around it. It'll give you a good rule of thumb of like, all right, is this taking a long time or where is this slow? If you find your processing around a large list or list operations to be slow, at that point, it might be in time to take something and make it a sequence, which it could be also very interesting. So let's assume that for whatever reason, we have a method, right? And this method is called uh, get list of customers. And this list of customers uh, comes from a database, right? And it's going to return a list of data. Uh, and it's returned, let's call it just integers for now. Uh, and then what we'll do is I'm just going to do this right here. It's going to return a list to that to list. We're just going to pretend that this is actually is from a, a database. So I'm going to pretend it's in the library. I'm going to get this out of here. Okay, whatever. So now I'm going to have my, I'm going to change this to list. Actually, we'll, we'll leave a sequence. Uh, actually, we'll go to, I'm going to change it back to, to list and I'll show you why in a second. So we're going to say this is list and say, we'll say val list equals get cust list of customers. So there we go. Now we have our list of customers. We're going to perform some filtering on it and it's going to run. Now, as we know, this is going to take a long time because this list of customers here is a very, very large list. Now, 
again, we're generating this on the fly. So let's go ahead and pretend you don't see that. Let's assume that it just returns a list and we don't have control over that. But however, we now that we have this large list, however it's been processed, maybe on a background thread, but now we have it and we need to process it. We now have control of them. So this is a very large list. Let's go ahead and run this again. So we have that in list of customers. Actually, we can go ahead and take, let's assume that this is out of here because we don't want to measure that component there. So we have our list of customers. It's gonna, that list of customers is gonna take probably eight or 10 seconds to generate because it has to turn it into a list. And most likely this block of code will probably take another eight or 10 seconds to, to execute as well. So perhaps this is on a background thread. We can't control that. That just is what it is. And we're maybe we're gonna get that data back. But now once it's off that background thread, we can control it. So for example, it takes eight seconds. So at that point, how could we speed this up? Well, because this is a list at this point in time, everything's running slow. Now, thankfully, there's actually a nice method on the collection here called as sequence. And what this will do is we'll turn this, I'm gonna go ahead and break these into new lines here. This will turn this list into a sequence. And so what this will allow us to do is get some performance benefit as treating this list as a sequence. And then from this point on, after, after this line, everything will be operated sequentially as a sequence would. So let's go ahead and, and rerun this. And as we're running it here, we're waiting. And of course, it's going to take a while because we're assuming this is on a background thread. It's going to take a while, eight or 10 seconds. And then once we get our result back, boom. Now this code has been measured. Previously, it took almost nine seconds to run. Now we turned it into a sequence via the as sequence helper method. And we now have transformed this from a nine second operation into a 244 second millisecond, 244 millisecond operation, orders of magnitudes faster just by slapping on IS sequence. Now, of course, you're not gonna get this benefit if your list is 10 items, you're not gonna see that drastic improvement. It's gonna be very negligible at that point. So follow the, the mantra of whatever gets measured gets managed. Uh, if you find a slow piece in your code, see what's taking a long time. If it's around a list or a map or something like that, perhaps you need to figure out a way to turn it into a sequence so you can get some performance benefit out of it. And of course, be sure to check out the blog link in the show notes. So big hat tip to Benjamin for demonstrating a perfect example. I tried to create my own, but his example was just so succinct and great. Thank you, Benjamin, for, for doing that.